Before we go cool sign law, I just wanted to have one more go at it. I call these, you know, these are word problems where you get a diagram, but you probably won't always get a diagram, okay? But uh, <clears throat> when you look at this question, you immediately identify the pair. So after today, you're going to have to decide is it sine law or cosine law? Those are the only two we're going to need. Because of that pairing, immediately you're thinking sign law. So the question is asking, how far will you have to row if he travels from point A to B to C, sorry, A to B to C and then back to A? So it's like a round trip. So essentially you need to solve for everything. There's a side A, <clears throat> there's a side B, right? So I'm looking at my key here. So the first order of business here is to uh, solve for side E. So I'm going to start with my pair, which I could tell uh, quite a few of you knew what had to be done and you answered it, so way to go. Uh, so cross multiply and divide, right? Uh, over sine of 133. So just for notes, uh, purposes, right? 618, 96 meters. So that is not quite the answer yet, but that is part of my answer. And then to find side A, I need angle A, and I already have two. So angle A would be 180 minus 113 minus 27. Angle A would just be 40 degrees. That's also important to me. And uh, you can go ahead and use the same pair you started with. And in this case, you're going to use sine of 40 because sine of 40, which is here, allows you to find the side across from it, which is A. Right? So you there cross, multiply, and divide. And you get that A is 876.37 meters. Right? That's also important. So round trip or total distance would be um, 1255 plus 61896 plus 87637. And that gives you no dollar sign. I'm so used to working with money. 2750, 33 meters. Okay. So that would be the ultimate answer in this case. So it's uh, basically solving the triangle and then, and then taking it one step further, which I'm sure all of you understood that that had to be done. So a completely filled in diagram. And then on page 14, part it, it's just the setup is given, but not the whole thing. Remember this, guys. I don't know if I already covered angle of elevation depression, but you always have to imagine there's a horizontal. If you're looking up, this is angle of elevation. Right, you can't see that. And if you were to look down, right, the angle of depression is here. Right, so um, there's always the horizontal. This is very important uh, to not mistake that there has to be a horizontal in the mix. Right? So keep that in mind when you're working with these. So it says that. There's a hot air balloon, right? David and Eva are watching from the ground and they're standing 100 feet, 100, uh, just 100 feet apart, sorry. 100 feet apart, so that goes there. Uh, the angle of, uh, and the angle between Charlie's line of sight to the two of them is 11. So this is 11 right here. Okay. Eva is 505 feet from the balloon. So this is 505 here. That's the direct distance. 
and we're going to calculate the angle of elevation. Oh, wait. I got this wrong, didn't I? Because it's asking, what is the angle of elevation of David's line to the balloon? So this is actually question mark. I'm going to call that angle D, but that's that's a uh, question mark. Let me, let me read this again. The angle between Charlie's line of sight to the two. So Charlie's way up here. My bad. Okay, that's, that's the 11 right there. And this is a bit of a tough one. So I'm just going to say this. This angle right here pairs up with 100 feet. So you know it's sine law, right? So sine of 11 over 100 is a sign of, I'm going to figure out uh, angle D here, and that's 505 feet. So sine of D is 505 times sine of 11 divided by 100. I'm going to just get my key here, and that is 0 0.8. 9635, right? And to find angle D, we just have to take the inverse of sine like that. And here it is. Angle D is 7449. Always round to two decimals. Always include your units. And there you have it. Okay? This is the other angle I wanted you to find. So, if it asks for the angle of elevation at EVAS, right, or EVAS, you would imagine that, and this is the angle of elevation. So I'm going to call that, I'm going to say um, angle of elevation at EVAS. Question mark, I'm adding that, right? What would you have to find first in this case? Well, you'd have to find this angle here, which uh, I'm going to call that the, I'm going to give that an orange color, this angle right there. I can find that, and you can tell that these two will be supplementary. So I'm going to call uh, angle D, E, C. Right, D, E, C, this is the angle, the orange one here, it would be 180 minus uh, the 11 degree minus the 7449 that I just found. And that is 9451 degrees, that's the orange one. And to get the angle of elevation, I'm just going to call it this. We would also go 180 minus the 9451, okay. which is 8549 degrees. This is the angle of elevation for her. Okay. Um, I'm going to put this down straight angle. This one, we use sum of triangle to get the, right, if you want to justify. We use sum of triangle to first find the one that was next to the one we were interested in. And so these are, these are supplementary, right? All right, putting sign law on hold for a bit, just for a bit, okay. but it's coming back. Um, I'm going to stop this video here.